I'm going to try to keep the sermon relatively short since last week I went uh, overly long. And I wanted to speak a little bit about our Blessed Mother as the month of May is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And one thing that St. Louis de Montfort in his book, The True Devotion to Mary, which is one of the most (coughs) profound and most beautiful explanations of devotion to Our Lady and of her role, one of the key things that he points out in the beginning of the book is that compared to God, Mary is less than an atom. She is nothing because she is a creature created by God, as we all are. Without God, she is nothing. But the great dignity and role of the Blessed Virgin Mary is very very clearly seen in the work of our redemption. When we look at Christ, when we look at the Gospels, when we look at the work of redemption, Mary is not the central figure, because obviously Christ is the central figure of that, but Mary is so closely linked with Christ and participated in the work of the redemption. It was at her fiat, it was at her word, that the second person of the Blessed Trinity was conceived and the incarnation took place, that God became man. It was in her womb that the Son of God His body was formed. And that that for nine months, Mary's womb was the dwelling place of the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He enclosed himself and was completely subject and dependent on her. He was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And it was her role to provide for him, to care for him, to nurture him to raise him, as was the role of St. Joseph, but that's another topic. But the blessed, Christ was subject to her, was totally dependent on her, not only in those nine months in her womb, but as a child, he was, de- he was dependent on her totally. And as a boy, and as a young man, he was perfectly subject to her, he was obedient to her. We can imagine what a beautiful thing it was for the three holiest people that have ever lived to live together at that home in Nazareth. Christ, the Son of God, made man. Mary, the most perfect of all creatures, the mother of God. And St. Joseph, who was holy enough and humble enough and pure enough to be the guard and custodian and head of this holy family. In the work of the redemption, Mary is right next to Christ. When Christ begins his public life, Mary is right there at the wedding feast of Cana. And he works his first miracle at, his, at her request. With a simple, simple request, simple statement, they have no wine. And then in response to our Lord's words, turning to the servants, do whatever he tells you, because she knew her son better than anyone. So our Lord worked his first miracle. That first recognition of Christ's divine power came at Mary's request and at Mary's prayer. That faith came from Mary's prayer. At the crucifixion, when Christ was being blasphemed, when he was being tortured, when he was being put to death, Mary stood at the cross and was there suffering with her divine son. Though it is not, though we do not read many words of Our Lady in sacred scripture, though she is not present throughout all the pages, still she is very much there. And St. Augustine, one of the great fathers of the church, went so far as to say that as Christ was formed in the womb of Mary, so we all, who are 
members of the mystical body of Christ, so we all must be formed spiritually under the care of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That as God, God does not change. With him there is no change or shadow of alteration. And as God saw fit to choose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be a vital piece, uh, to have a vital role in the work of the redemption, so in the sanctification of our souls, so in the work of our own redemption and working out our salvation, God has chosen that Mary play a central role. That without, Christ, without Mary, Christ would not have come into this world. And without Mary, we cannot be likened to Christ, cannot be formed as another Christ, one who imitates Christ. Mary plays this role. And I can tell you, having been in many different parishes, spoken with many different people, whenever I hear conversion stories, almost, almost always, when I ask people, what started it? What did it? What got you to turn away from the world and start detaching yourself from the world and living more for God and wanting to seek out what God wanted of you? What started it? And almost all of them say, we started praying the rosary. We started, we started honoring Mary every day. So often, that was the start. That's what brought about these people's conversions. And just as the work of redemption would not have taken place without Mary, so our own sanctification, the salvation of our soul, Mary must be present. If we wish to be like Christ, which is our calling and our duty as Christians, is to be like unto Christ. One thing that really stands out is that Christ who was perfection and holiness itself, must have had the greatest possible love for his mother. The most perfect son had the most perfect love for the most perfect mother. And that love for his mother, that is also something we are called to imitate. We must love Mary, because we cannot love Christ without loving his mother. So in this month of May, as it is dedicated to her, let us renew or rekindle our love and devotion for the Blessed Virgin Mary. Be this, let, us, let us be sure to pray the rosary every day, five decades at least. Pray it every day. Make sure it's not just put off until the very, very last thing when you don't have the, the time or the energy or the attention to pray it well. Pray the rosary every day. Seek to honor Mary in this way, and also by learning a little bit more about her and about her role, about her virtues. There are a couple of good books that I can recommend. One is True Devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort, The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonse de Sigori, The Secret of the Rosary, again by St. Louis de Montfort, these are three books that are really, really good and I think would be very helpful if you haven't read them or even, you know, reading them again. But the, mo but the better we understand Mary, the better we will understand Jesus, her divine son. The two go together. Let us remember, lastly, that when we honor Mary, we honor Jesus. The two are not separated. When we honor Mary, we are recognizing God's great work in her. We are recognizing her role as the mother of Christ. So when we honor Mary, we are honoring Jesus. We honor God, who works such great wonders in her and who chose her as a special <laughs> instrument. Let us not be afraid to honor her too much because Mary is like a mirror that reflects all honor and praise that is given to her and reflects it directly back at Christ, her divine son. And we see this in scripture when her cousin Elizabeth praised her. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And she responded in that beautiful prayer of the Magnificat 
where she perfectly took all of the honor and praise that was directed at her and turned it back to God who had worked those wonders in her. Let us honor Mary in a special way every day. Look to her as our spiritual mother as she truly is and know that the more we love her, the more we will grow in our love for Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.